What's up YouTube? Spoiler season for Legends of Runeterra starts today and I'll be reacting to all the new cards. Uh, keep in mind that I'm, I'm a low elo player, I don't really care about gameplay all that much. I'm just here for the flavor, the lore, the artworks. So if you're interested in that, stick around and let's begin. Before the video starts, I just want to say that uh, apparently most of the cards that were revealed today weren't supposed to be revealed today. They accidentally leaked a bunch of cards and I didn't know this while I was reacting. So this is your warning. I've reacted to probably all the cards that are going to be out in this expansion. And if you want to wait for these cards to be revealed as they were supposed to, I advise you to not watch this video. Uh, the cards aren't out yet. I don't think so. Uh, at least not in the websites. They have posted already on Twitter, but first I wanted to kind of look at the promotion that Riot is doing for uh, the new set, or I should say the new expansion. Uh, first they released this image, which was which is also here on the websites like Mobilitics and stuff. Uh, and we can clearly see like Nico here and some of the Fuemigos from Milio. And there's also the cats from Pekatech in the background. And uh, it seems that Riot is like creating this uh, narrative for their promotion where this character is trying to free the animals from the Piltoven poachers. And so let, let's see. Look, Froop, a reptilian Vastaya. But why is she in a cage? Oh no, we really hopped in this time. Our research expedition is run by poachers? Don't worry, we're gonna get you out of here. Okay, so this is clearly this character here, and we know the name of this character because it's here. It's Anura, and I believe we also know the name of the frog. Yeah, it's Froop. So this is Anura, and this is Froop. And then they posted this image right here, or I should say this was posted yesterday. Or no, this was actually today. Okay, my bad. They posted this today, and they posted these today too, but after. So, an Uranian Froop outsmart the poachers each day from 620 to 626 on Twitter. Paste the seven character alphanumeric creature ID after this link right here. And for now, this link is not working. There's nothing here because you are supposed to, let me see this right here. You are supposed to insert a code after this URL here and crack their code, and you might spot some interesting creatures, or missing creatures, as I should say. And it's only a matter of time before those poachers realize we let everyone go, which is why I stole their notes. If we crack their code, we can ensure everyone gets to safety before the poachers find them again. Again, this is the narrative of these characters trying to free the animals. And in case you're wondering, uh, in the card Beguiling Cobra, we can actually see the, po the Piltoven poachers, you know, uh, venturing to Ishtal, likely to like capture fauna and flora. Uh, so yeah, notebook of Captain Rowan and company. I wonder if this is a reference to Riot Rowan, which is working on uh, Riot Forge games. But yeah, uh, let me zoom in on this image. The frog and the girl. Oh, there's a dog barking outside. The frog and the girl might be onto us. Lucky or hunting notes are all written in code. Each creature has a unique seven character alphanumeric identification code. Uh, this is very likely means like these codes right here. Hold on. If I search for the cobra again, for example, uh, each card has a numeric code. You can see here. This is the code, and I believe it's seven digits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six, seven. It's seven digits. So this is likely the seven digits that they mean by these alphanumeric codes. Uh, we'll have ints in just in case someone forgets which beast we're after. Don't let Cornelius write anymore. It's like deciphering children's doodles. Okay. Uh, so. After this, they released a new post, and I will be looking at the cards in a second. But first, 
they released this image as well. And this image, I believe, has a code. So if I go to paint, I take this code right here. I stretch it out like this and like this. Boom, we got a code right here. Unfortunately, I don't think the code is working yet because if I type the code and I paste it, oh, it is working. All right. So here we got, it seems to be one of the beasts seen in Peck Attack, right? Seems to be, seems to be one of these, oops, one of these beasts, right? All right. So let's check out the new cards. Maybe they are already here. That would be good. No, it seems that. All right, we got a bunch of new cards. Oh, I see Nico. Okay, uh, let's let's first see what's here. Let me just like see from a distance. Yeah, this seems to be the same cards that are right here. So I just I'm just going to look here, and let's start from here actually. Okay, so this is a bird, Aurora Halunatis. How I, I would like to see one myself. Most of the expeditions believe Aurora Halunatis is a myth, but one young man swears otherwise. He tells me that the bird is brilliantly colored, with a wingspan as long as a man is tall. To look into its eyes, he confides in me one night, is to understand what that you are prey. Nice. From a Nurus field journey. Okay, so these young man is speaking to Anura, which is the character that we see here. That's uh, very cool. Oops. Okay. And you can see like reptiles and kind of squirrely cats and creatures. That's very cool. Okay. I need to go fast because, oh shit, there's even more cards. Hold on. Oh. Oh, that, these are a lot of cards. Okay, let's let's start here then. Okay, Mage Seeker Junior, huh? Silence. This is no mere game, as you claim, as you claim, but the cloak of some insidious arcane engagement. I mean to expose you as a shit and a mage, you old scoundrel. Even if I have to burn this whole establishment down to it. Oh, nice. this is very interesting. This is a mage seeker who does not like uh, Telstones. And so in the mage seeker, there is a, uh, a note of a Damasian who really does not like King's Gambit or basically the Damasian Telstones. So I wonder if it is this person right here because it is called Mage Seeker. Insider Junior, which is very similar to just Mage Ticker Junior. So I think this was a reference. I think this was intentional. This is really cool. I think this is, you know, furthering the Damasian anti magic archetype. And we are probably going to see Silas uh, coming out in this set. Okay, a bird, Crested Lionhawk. What is this? This is a Damasian, but I'm seeing here Piltoven Butcher, Pouchers, I mean. So let's see. Recording. First confirmed sighting the Lionhawk in nearly 50 years. Beautiful blue crest. Intelligent eyes, bodies armored, but bones are light enough for at least three climbing, if not limited, limited gliding. Wing searches almost reminiscent of the Massian silver wings. Hmm. We will return with more measurements from a Nurius field journey. So this is a Damasian creature. Interesting. So it makes sense that uh, we're seeing Anura's, you know, notes here because she seems to be the one that is doing the research, right? But then she finds out that the, her research is being run by poachers. Oh, you can see Citria here. That's nice. Uh, the Damascian Draft Sergeant carries a weight responsibility, weighty responsibility. His recruits would go on to occupy many different posts, all united in their duty to and love for Damascian. Okay, she's just normal Damasian card, scrutinizing sergeant. And he has like the symbol of a badger here. That's really funny. What is this friend? What is this fluffy bird? 
ferocious fluffs. Oh, and you can see Niku here and some poachers. Unfortunately for this crew of Piltoven poachers, they only look harmless. Okay. Oh my god, look at this. It's so funny. Oh, and there's another one like here. Nice. Yordle, Portal Scholar. You can see some of Nora's, I guess, Yumi's followers here. That's nice. At the forefront of any research, there are bound to be surprises. Lately, this is a fortunate one. Return a wrench? I can't lie, I'm pro to losing my tools. This one, though, always pops back up right when I need it. Safety Inspector, another character that uh, also appears in other cards, I believe. Oh, oh, this is cool. Recall, an ally invented my stats. Three, there are a few sites more splendid than the meeting of the sun and the moon. Diana, these are the guys from... Yeah, these are these guys right here. And what's cool about it is that they are, they are already in the game. Let me just open a new tab here. Here, they are the Lunari Shade Stalker and the Solari Soldier. Uh, they are the same characters. You can see the Stalker right here. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I really like this. Age of Dragons. To know one dragon is to master the self. To know many is to master the world. Otrani. Dragon Worshipper. Oh, Otrani is the species from Soraka's followers. And Otrani Dragon Whisper seems to be a new follower. Because I don't believe we have Otrani Dragon Whisper in the game yet. Sacred Shears. With a good pair of scissors and quality thread, you can set almost anything alright. Gwen. So, I believe this is his old hand. I think it's very likely. This is a Gwen quote, hallowed card. It's probably his old. Oh my god, what am I looking at? Tuft Web Spinner. Tuft Web Spinners take great care in crafting their nests. They are especially doting on their siblings, but equally vicious when it comes to potential threats. Can't really see, but I assume this is a Piltoven. Okay, more spiders. He seems to be Shadow Isles. Ne necrotic Nestling. When there's one, there's always more. And Necro Venom works fast. This is just really creepy. Glacial Saurian. Saurian? With a bony exterior bellying its big heart, these reliable steeds are vital for clearing icy mountain, pass, mountain passes. It's really cool. I wonder who this is. I wonder if we'll see this as a follower. Okay, Ingvar the Younger. Okay, Ingvar is a character that is mentioned in the lore of a lore of cards, or in the flavor, I should say. Um, like most Poru or Yeti or Elnok cards have some kind of flavor mentioning Ingvar. Like, uh, Tal Tales is an example, and Warden of the Tribes is another example. So, Ingvar the Younger, self-appointed Poru supervisor and explorer of the Freljor. Ingvar is sure that adventure is out there and she is going to find it. Oh, it's a girl. Okay. Something curious about uh, they being like a young girl here is that we actually also have had mentions of Ingvar the Elder, and I have always assumed this to be just the future version of Ingvar, but I guess it just might be like an older family member of them. Also, we can see here some more plushies, including a Poru King plushie, and obviously Poru King has been leaked, uh, but in that icon of his, he looks like a plushie. Yeah. In the leak, Poru King looks like a plushie. You can see like the stitching here, and obviously uh, the Pauti Poru, which is also a card that mentions Ingvar, also has like all these plushies, including Right here, a Poro King plushie. So, for some reason, uh, Runeterra AR seems to be down, and Mobilitix doesn't really have all the cards. So, I'm going to be checking out Twitter because SpiderX is posting all the artworks and flavor right now. So, I'll just check it here. All right, can take Cater Mobile? Mobile? Damn, this is a, a Chemtech creature of sorts in Freljar, that's interesting. And there's Ingvar here, and there's his plushies, including the Poroking plushie. I have to draw the horse, lots of legs, Mr. Lizard, because we gotta get to the castle fast. Uh-oh, 
He came a little goopy goopy and a little gwyn. Ingvar the younger. Huh, I have to draw the horse lots of legs. So I wonder if Ingvar has some kind of magic that whatever he, or I guess I guess you should say she, whatever she draws, like manifests and comes alive. You know? uh, we know that Nunu's imagination was what turned Willem from a, you know, a feral yeti into a more friendly looking yeti. So I wonder if her imagination is also like doing something to these creatures to manifest them. I mean, her card was about manifesting followers, so that would make sense. A Nurain Froop, so this is the artwork that we have seen. It has Nico, it has the cards for the cats from Pekatek, and it has the Milios Fuemigos. A Nurain Froop, I won't hurt you, friend. I came to this jungle for science, not destruction. Yeah, so we know that she's a friend. Oh, the Wumps. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Sump Monument. Deep beneath the streets of Zon, you are what you eat. This is like... <laughs> this is so funny. All right. Epic Scrap Traption. A scientist's primary responsibility is to control variables. The consequences of accidents in a field of study such as ours... Oh, I shudder to think of it, Professor Eimerdinger. What is this Katamari looking thing here? Like, what is this? Runaway scrap trap. Now, let me see. Perhaps if we added, oh dear, someone get, <laughs> someone get after that contraption, Professor Heimerdinger. Nice. We can see like all of the turrets combined and also like the, the poor robot, I think it's the name, also here. It's very funny. And Heimerdinger, of course. Okay. Captain Calrix. Noxus is an empire built for expansion above all. Wood, stone, or steel. Nothing can stop the advance of the Noxian battering ram. Nice battering ram. I think that was like already present in another card as well. Ravenborn Tomb. The Ravenbloom Conservatory. In case you don't know, it's the school that Annie went to and that she burned. <laughs> Uh, was especially especially renowned for its collection of texts, many of which ultimately become fuel for the rowing fire set by one of notoriously difficult pupil. Yeah, Annie went to this school, and the reason why they brought Annie to this school is because her mother also went to this school, and this is where her, they infused their mother with the powers of her fiery demon that was once one of Mordekaiser's beasts, but then her mo mother fled. Uh, a lot of things happened. TLDR, her mother is dead, and Annie then killed her stepmother and her father. And so they found Annie and they brought her to the school, and Annie burned the school down. Oh, this looks really cool. Bornhide Tritale. Be careful, you imbeciles. Noxins only by fighting beasts in perfect condition. So much as a scratch, and it's coming out of your pay. Became Tycoon. Okay, so. The poachers are selling the animals to Noxus as well. Interesting. These are really cool. It's probably like a Shadow Isles follower, but this is in Ishtal. We know that all these creatures are in Ishtal. Oh, Poruking level 1. Ingvar knows potential. Knows potential when she sees it. Homemade appearance aside, this beloved companion could easily be the ruler of a gajillion trillion Poros with the right amount of imagination. Again, Imagination, that's the key here. You see like drawings on the floor. It's really cool. And this is like the image that was leaked. Oh, I see. This is the same one. But like, this is what Invar sees in her imagination, right? Poro Moon, come look. Mr. Highness Poro is coming to life. Look, he really is. I'm not making this up. I think he promised Ingvar the Younger. So, yeah, if this is what he sees when he looks at the plushie, right, then something like the Warden, which is, this is something I already theorized before, this probably doesn't really exist, right? This is just what Ingvar, like, imagines uh, these creatures to look like. Either that or his imagination is bringing the creatures to life. I haven't figured out that part yet. But yeah, you can see like the Damasian Poros here. 
oh, this could also explain why portals are in all the regions, right? They aren't really all in all the regions. They just, they are just like how Ingvar imagines Porus or something. I don't know. Maybe they are in all the regions. See, he portal fly as well. Hey, okay. this is a mighty Poro, I think. The Poro King's Council call. They may be small, but they are strength in numbers. Round, fuzzy, terrifying, plentiful numbers. Nice. There's one with goggles here. I believe this is the one that flies. Right, see, pulled over. Espresso snacks. Okay, so this is from uh, the Legend of the Poro King uh, game mode in League of Legends. Served pinging hot and bursting with bold, roasty flavors. An early morning pick-me-up will do any poor some good. Pepper snacks. Doesn't seem to have lore right now. Okay, so this is the origin, I believe. The Poro King's Decree. This is his Super Highness Poro King's Decree. For protection of all the people. Ingvar the Younger. Call for snacks. All the colors. Do taste different. If you think really hard about it. Nice. It's interesting. This seems to be a Damasian cloth right here, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is a Freljordian cloth. So I wonder if each of the snacks is like related to a different region. Frosted snacks. These pastry boats, frosting handmade with all the flavors of the Freljord. Powder, snow, packed snow, and you guessed it, guess it, snowfall. Nice. Oh, this is really cool. The art looks like a little bit like different than what we are used to, but it looks cool. Niku can take many shapes, but her heart never changes, always leading her back to her family and her forest. Yeah, her forest is like the Kumungu jungles in Ishtal. So yeah, these are the fluffy birds from the other card. That's pretty cool. Niku's level 2. Shapes and colors. Colors and shapes. Niku can be them all. We can see the poaches, the Piltover and poaches here, and we can see the cats uh, that we can also see in Peck Attack. That's really cool. And this is the origin. Many shaped jungle friends. Niku will lead us to protect the jungle. Well, Niku will lead us to Nidalee. And then we will all protect the jungle together. It's nice. I wonder why it's called Many shaped Jungle Friends. This should probably be the Curious Chameleon, no? Okay, this is Niku's spell, Niku's shape, shape splitter. Niku is here, Niku is there. Niku could be anywhere. Niku. Nice. Re rejuvenating Breeze. The wind is the wonder's only ally. Yeah, so. All seeing Oracle. The eye unbound from the material world sees all. Blind though he may seem, those who mistake the Oracle for an easy target are rebuked swiftly and without mercy. And I believe this is probably from Lee Sin's uh, group, like the clothes seem very similar to Lee Sin, and I believe this is one of the, uh, what is it called? Yeah, I believe it's this guy, the Navori Highwayman. Like, I think like the Mohawk and the outfit looks very similar, and uh, there's another guy here, but I don't I don't think it's his friend right here. At least the clothes don't seem to match, but maybe it is. Carvings of divination. Watch. Watch how the sticks fall. Only when you look beyond what you see will you understand your fate. All seeing oracle. So this is the character from the previous card. Okay. Paka cub. Cuteness is an appearance, but ferocity is an instinct. Given time and teaching, even the littlest pakiti grow wild and strong. Okay, so paka, I assume, are these cats right here, and like the cubs are called pakiti. And you can see like the poachers here as well. Speaking of, paka's cubs ambush, make them pay. Okay, this is probably a skill. Paka protector. Okay, so the cat, the big cat, and the small cat share the same artwork. Pakiti are naturally inquisitive and prone to jumping four paws first into unfamiliar situations. With new dangers lurking in the jungle, lurking? Pack guardians keep a close eye than ever on their cubs, even if you can't see them. I like these designs of the poachers, they're really cool. 
Face check. Jungle reconnaissance is the least desirable assignment for one reason above all. It's full of surprises. And you can see like, I think the flowers are associated with Nico. And also seeing the other cards, I guess. Prowl. Walk softly, Pakiti. Strike through. Italy, so if it wasn't already confirmed, right? Oh, speaking of which, oh my god, this redesign. Oh, she looks so good. She looks nothing like uh, the artwork from her story. And like, she looks nothing like this. She looks way more human here. But here you can clearly see, okay, this is very likely of a style, right? Italy level one. I will always protect you, lizard girl. We will make these poachers pay together. That's very cute. And you can see like all the cats behind them as well. I like this. I like her redesign a lot. Oh, and I assume this is Nidalee, right? Peck Mother Nidalee, okay. So she's probably going to be like Nar and Evelyn, like she can transform back and forth. The men call her Kashdashi as an insult, but she commands the jungle. And they cannot hide the fact that they are not afraid, uh, that they are afraid. From Anuri's field journey, day 32. Okay, so this seems to be like the beast that was from like the teaser, from like the codes in the website. And it's very interesting because this clearly makes it seem like Nidalee is from the same species as the other cats, but she is the only one that can transform into a more like humanoid form, I assume, unless the others can too. Nidalee's ambush, make them pay. Oh, I didn't even notice her spear, like in her art. Shadow in the brush. You never know what could be concealed in the underbrush. Okay, this is interesting, because this is the artwork that they use to tease the expansion. This is really cool, you can see the poacher here. And, and people have been saying that you know, you got all the cat's eyes here and you got what is clearly Nidalee's eyes and then the people are saying that this is, these are Nico's eyes and I think that's really funny. Javelin Toss, you had your chance. Okay, this is Nidalee's spear. Also, really cool redesign. Ooh, a lizard Vastaya and you can see here the Pakiti. Avenging Vastaya, do not fear little ones, I will protect you and see my debt to Nidalee repaid. Okay, so this is someone that was helped by Nidalee. And she's destroying a cage, like the same cages from uh, that Nico can be seen here and the other men, animals are trapped on. Really cool. Enough. Last time your cowardly tricks took me by surprise. That will not happen again. Kulken. Kulken is the name of the previous character. Okay. Avenging Vastaya's ambush. So ambush seems to be a new keyword. Make them pay. Oh, look at this design though. It's very interesting. It's, you can see that it's filled with webs. So this guy is likely the victim of the spy, the big spider that we see. I'm pretty sure he had like the legs there as well. Oh, and you can see the spider right here. Okay. All-terrain trooper. This here beauty can turn even a novice into a tree climbing. Boulder jumping professional. Cost me a fortune, but I'm sure I can pay off these loans with the skin of a rare beastie of two. Okay. Oh, and you can see, I believe these are like the plants from uh, Summoner's Rift, like the blasting, blasting plants, blasting clones. Blimp Peck Poacher. Ah, try and get me now, silly beasts. Even gravity can defeat a superior species. Meanwhile, he's being <laughs> surprised by another beast here, which I believe is not the Damasian one. I think this is a new one. You can see him like running away from the cats. Secure the goods. A positively resplendent find. Rowan is sure to reward me for this. Blink Pack Poacher, that was a character from the previous artwork, so it's probably a skill. Yeah, okay, it's a skill, it's really saying here. The artwork isn't there yet. Snowy Razor Claw. Though the Snowy Razor Claw primarily hunts small mammals, this frail Urian beast has enough claws to make nearly anything into a meal. And this is a very, very cool beast. I really like this design and it, it's <laughs> chasing little squirrels. Okay. Temple of True Ice. 
Though the meaning of this temple has long been lost to time, its stone guardian still stands unbent by the weight of many avalanches. Rimmed with frost, it seems to imbued with some strange and alluring light. Oh, I wonder what this is supposed to be. You can see some weapons here, and I don't know who this is. Like the clothes are very Averrosen looking. It could also be like a younger version of Björk. For example, we see him like as we know him as this old man, but like it's very similar to what this old person looks like. So I think I think this could be Björk, like an older version, uh, a younger version, I, I should say. Oh no, siren song. Some Bilgewater sailors stuff cotton in their ears on the quiet, quietest nights at sea. They know well that music from beneath the waves promised nothing but a watery tomb. And they use this guy again, in case you don't know. He's just the Bilgewater punching bag. They always give him a slightly different design, but he always has like a bandana, a red bandana and like an eye patch. But it's like it's always the same, they're just not consistent with his design, and he's always getting fucked. Oh, this seems to take place in this castle right here, right? I'm assuming, because we can see Ingvar here and Aldaporus. Dragon Prince Grinzo. Mr. Lizard, what are you doing here? You like Porus too? Ingvar the Younger. So yeah, I assume that all of these characters are here because they have some kind of subtype. Like, for example, this is clearly a lizard. And Ingvar is clearly, like supposed to be played with subtypes and probably Poru King too. Oh no, the war threats. Deck Hunter. There's a reason we keep this scruffy little guy around. I haven't had a war threat problem in years. Okay, sure, but the war threats can grow like really big, like the size of wolves. And you can see one hiding here. The Swindler's Den. I reckon you ought to know your hand and hold it close. Or be prepared to lose it all. Okay, just twisted fight card. Big game tycoon. Okay, this was mentioned in other cards. You lost everything to what? A scientist and a reptile freak. Okay, uh, frogs, not reptiles, but okay. Well, what are you standing around for, you buffoons? Go out there and get my money back. I can see here a reptile. That just ate a mosquito. <laughs> and you can see this guy, I think he appears in other artworks too. That's cool. Okay. Aurora's Alunatis Ambush. So, whatever ambush is, almost every single character there, or every single skill that comes from ambush, has the same artwork, but just like a bit different. Like, Aurora Alunatis obviously has that bird with those weird effects, so that's what we see here. Make them pay, that's always the text, the same text as well. You can see how oh, here's another ambush. Towering Pi France ambush. And okay, it's not the same guy, but they are all in the same pose, at least. And it's a transform. Interesting. Bristlehawk. Small omnivorous mammals covered in bristles, covered in bristle-like spikes, which may be released at high velocities when disturbed. Tail is barred and agile, likely used as a defensive weapon. According to experienced expeditioners, the creatures are notoriously grouchy and difficult to handle. From a Nuris Field Journey. Okay, so a lot of transform. It's interesting. Oh my god, what is this? Oh, it's an elephant. Towering perf perophant. As its oldest residents, some say perophants hold the memory, the memory and heart of the jungle itself. Though normally gentle creatures, they will not hesitate to defend their home against any threat, great or small. Another ambush? Bushwhack trap. Blood on the Wind. Okay, so this is uh, Italy's trap from League of Legends. 
and another ambush. And I believe these were all the cards. We, we've seen uh, the story of Nidali and Nico against the Piltovern Poachers. I was expecting uh, the third champion to be a Piltovern champion because last expansion, Glory and Avori, we had three champions. And even though only one of them is from Ionia, they were all in Ionia in their artworks. Like a uh, riot developed a narrative that uh, joined together all these three champions. And I was expecting something similar to be done for this expansion. But I guess Poru King and Ingvar don't really have like a story related to Nidalee and Nico. Also, I wanted to just point out that we sort of already knew that it's going to be Nico for a while. Like last expansion, or I should say let's last set, we got Curious Changelings, which at first sight might seem like a NAR follower because of the transform synergy. But if you look at the Yordle here, this is not a prehistoric Yordle. And you can also see this plant right here, which is very similar to Nico's plants. And the way that they are like shape shifting is also very, very reminiscent of Nico, and they are called Curious Changelings. Nico's title is the Curious Chameleon. So to me, this was a teaser towards uh, Nico. And also on the Darkin Saga roadmap, they you know had a section for 2023, and they used the character Danny, which in case you don't know, it's the Manasol student. And even though there's no connection between him and Nico, they are from the same species. They are from the Vastayan species called Uviket. And to me, uh, including him here was another teaser that we would be getting Nico right now. And yesterday they released this teaser for uh, the expansion, the new expansion, and it, some people got the name of the expansion as well, uh, Heart of the Huntress. So we knew that it was going to be in Italy, but we also already knew that because Pack Attack, which was a card that came in the last uh, variety set, had the description alone Huntress is fearsome enough, but a pack is truly ferocious, clearly a teaser for Nidalee. And Nidalee also got a voiceover update in League of Legends, which so it makes sense that her voice would also be used somewhere else, in this case Legends of Runeterra. We also got all these new subtypes, reptile, bird, cat, dog, and obviously Nidali fits the cat subtype and uh, Niku sort of fits the reptile subtype, and they both fit these animal subtypes in general because they live in the jungle. Again, I was expecting the set to bring a related champion alongside them, even though we can like clearly see Milieu's like spirits, friends, like his four amigos in this artwork. I don't think that we'll be seeing Milio. I'm just bringing Milio up because I want to show you guys that Wright has been working on Ishtal for a while. Obviously, they released Milio. They are working on Skarner. We know that they were working on Nidalee and Nico as well for Legends of Runeterra. We know that now, but Nidalee's voiceover was released like three months ago. So we've been knowing that this was a thing. And one interesting thing about Skarner is that they are moving him from Shurima to Ishtal. And this is interesting because the Bracken were a species that were that were the origin of Extec. And it was Camille's family family, the Pharaoh's clan, that brought the Extec crystals from Shurima to Piltover. And now that Skarner and the Bracken are being moved to Ishtal, it's kinda likely that the Extec crystals will now be from, originally from Ishtal and not Shurima. And this makes perfect sense because uh, Riot has been working on this narrative of Piltovans invading the Ishtalian jungles for a while. You can see this was the teaser for Kiana, you know, we can clearly see like uh, Piltovers invading the jungle. So if you combine this narrative with the Extec coming from Ishtal as well, I think it makes Total sense. And I'm only bringing this up because I was expecting Camille to be the third champion. And the reason why I was expecting a Piltovan champion was because we got the Big Isle Cobra 
and in it we can see Piltoven Pouchers invading the Istalian jungles. And yeah, even though this is an Ionian card in-game, its artwork, it's very likely taking place in Ishtal, because Ishtal, or the Komungu jungles, are right next to Piltover and Zorn. So Camille is technically still on the table, and I would love to see her you know, interact with uh, Niku and Nidalee in some way, but why don't we try to predict other champions that might come to Legends of Runeterra? So Riot loves to tease champions before they are released, they did it with Nidalee, they did it with the Poro King, they did it with other champions, so who's next? An obvious choice would be Milio, because we are in Ishtal, and we can see his Fuemiglus all over this artwork, but as I said, we know that Riot probably worked on Milio at the same time as they worked on Niku and Nidalee, so that's probably why we can see references to Milio in artworks. As I said, the Mage Seeker Jr. is a character that was likely referenced in the Mage Seeker game in one of the notes. Many notes from the Mage Seeker actually reference other lore followers, so if you're interested in that, I have a thread in on Twitter and I'll leave the link in the description. But something that Riot has been pushing for a while is this archetype of Demacia being anti spells. And this is something that they have stated themselves. In the future, we're looking to lean into the masses' anti-magic identity even further. So, and I think that from the remaining Damasian champions, the one that fits this the most would probably be Silas. Some spoilers for the Mage Seeker game, but in the ending, uh, Silas mentions that he is going to travel to Freljord. And this obviously leads into the story The Shackles of Belief, which is a story where Silas meets the Winter's Claw and he aligns himself with them. And we can see like uh, him invading the Masi alongside the Winter's Claw in the Warrior cinematic. And following the idea from Glory in Avori and Heart of the Huntress, where certain champions are connected, you know, in terms of narrative, it would be really interesting if Silas was somehow connected to a Freljordian champion. And what champion could this be? Well, for a while there's been this narrative of the Winter's Claw and the Ursine. We, it first started in Silence of the Damned, and recently it was expanding in Dead of Winter. The Winter's Claw and Sejuani are trying to retrieve the Orn's Cauldron from the Ursine, and that's what we see in the Call Cinematic. We see the Winter's Claw fighting the Ursine. And we also know that some particularly catastrophic threats from the Feral Yard will be joining Legends of Runeterra, and I think that fits Volibear very well. So I think releasing Silas alongside Volibear would be a very interesting combo. It could have been even more interesting if they released the Poru King alongside them, which I understand why they didn't do it, because the Poru King is meant to be played alongside Nico. but in terms of narrative, releasing these three champions which are connected to the Freljord without making them all Freljordian would have fit very well with what they did in Glory in Avori. So yeah, it seems that Riot re accidentally released the cards way too soon. Yeah, they even posted these Operation Toadstools hit some puff caps. Let's give that another go. Nice. All right, so these were all the new cards apparently from the new set. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one.